Hello everybody, uh, this is a quick tutorial on how to create a Gutman chart, something I was talking about in our VCE meeting last week. So what I've already set up, as you can see on the screen, is just one of my Google Docs. Uh, on the left hand side, I've got a list of names, generally there'd be a list of students, but for the moment it's our Year 12 office, so our Year 12 office is planning to sit our physics exam. What I have got in front of me is a copy of my physics exam, this will just make it really nice and easy to um, go through the questions and set this whole Goodman chart up. Okay, so one of the first things you need to set up is obviously students' names. Generally, you can download the spreadsheet from Compass, okay, um, just on the uh, right-hand side when you go to the class page. Uh, so generally what you'd, uh, generally what you'd um, download is the list of names. You get the first and last names. At the moment, I've just got the first names. But the first column would be... Um, the first name and then the second column would be the last name pretty straightforward um, so generally that's our first two columns in use um, then what we have is we need to sort of start setting this up so we need to have a measure of how many questions there are and ha how many marks each question is okay that's very important that's the main focus of our Goodman chart so so to really set this up, we essentially need the first three rows available. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear that section for the uh, first little bit. Those first three columns will still represent the name and first name and last name. But what we're going to do is we're going to set these up. So I set this first row up as mainly your subject area or sorry, your area of study. Uh, the next one is the question. And lastly, how many marks each question is worth. Okay, that's very important with all of this. So as I'll just bold that. So my first area of study for physics is fields. That's our area of study one. So I'm going to start with that. I'm not going to do anything with that at the moment. Uh, first of all, I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on question one. So I'm going to look at question one. It breaks up into three parts. It's got one A, one B, and one C. So on that question row, I'm simply going to label that. And then just underneath that for question one A, one A for me is worth two marks. So as I work my way through that, one B is worth two, and one C is also worth two, okay? So I'm gonna move on to question two. So question two is just one part. There's no part A, part B uh, on its own. And that question two on its own is worth two marks. So as we flip over, it can get a little bit repetitive at this point. I've got question three. So question three is worth two marks. Uh, question four is worth three marks. Question five is worth six. Um, actually, it's not worth six. It's broken up into parts. So I've got to look at the other page. So it's 5A, uh, 5B, 5C. And that's it. So each of 5A, 5B, 5C are two marks each. And it's really good to break these questions down because uh, even though they... Most of these questions link with one another. It's good to see where exactly that they've uh, gotten their questions correct or incorrect. So as you can see, I've got five questions here. My whole exam paper consists of uh, 25 questions. So I don't want to really use too much of my Excel spreadsheet. So I want to try and start thinning my uh, columns. Um, so as I go, if I highlight the first one, so if I go to column C and I... Um, sort of drag my cursor as far right as possible. I'm going to hold shift and press Z and that will highlight all of those columns and I want to change the width of those columns. What I can do is I can right click it and down here you can see resize columns. So at the moment they're 100 pixels wide. So you look at that width, I just want to sort of shorten that a little bit. So I might uh, break that down to 20, press OK and that looks pretty accurate, okay? So I've got a lot of information that I want to fit on my spreadsheet. I don't want to have to constantly scan all the way to the left and to the right. Um, with a Google Sheet, so Google, uh, if you ever use this in Microsoft Excel, essentially everything is exactly the same. With um, Google Doc, though, they do limit on the amount of columns that you do initially start with. Um, so I only start with 26 columns, A to Z. So if I uh, go to, uh, let's say I click L, I hold shift and click Z. So there I've, I've highlighted 15 columns. What I can do is uh, right click it and click um, insert 15 to the right and I get another 15 columns. What I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that a few times because I've got a few columns to make up. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my questions. I'm going to look at my question number six. Okay, six is broken up into three parts. So I've got six A, six B, and six C. And each of those sections are broken up into the A is worth three marks, B is worth two, and C is also worth two. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to uh, complete the rest of my stack, and then I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I've finished all the questions so far. So as you can see at the top, I've got question number one that I've highlighted there all the way over to question number six underneath uh, how much each of the individual sections are marked, okay? Up the top, I've got my three areas study. So I've got fields, electric fields, and motion within physics. So what I'm going to do is with those uh, that section that covers fields, so question one to question number nine, it's going to merge those cells. And that's just going to... Um, make it nice and easy so when we uh, sort it all out and I might, uh, that is merge and I might just center that. And I'm going to do exactly the same for electric fields and my electric fields covers from question 10 to 13 so I'll merge that cell, center that and then with motion I'm just going to merge that and center it again. Okay so now the next part is it's all about uh, trying to um, get our totals for each, each of the sections. So just across here um, over there, I'm just going to merge these two cells, so that uh, one on top of another, and I'm just going to tilt the writing. Uh, I can use this little text rotation, and just so it's a little type up, and I'm just going to label that section fields. Okay, so as I go there, my uh, text has been tilted a little bit. Uh, my next one, I'm going to do exactly the same for the next two next to the field, so I'll merge that, and I'll tilt that writing. And I'm just going to call that E slash fields. Don't want it too big, just so I can fit it in the box. And then that last one, I'll merge those two and tilt the writing, and that will be motion. So this is just going to give me a summary of how the students have performed uh, on each of those individual sections. So underneath, we're still in that marks uh, row, so that row number three. In that fields one, I'm just going to uh, go up to my little... Um, where I've entered the equations, I'm going to go equals, and I'm going to type in sum. And the sum formula uh, just adds up all the cells within that section that you're selecting. So as I select all the ones that cover my field section, all of those numbers that are, uh, I've highlighted will uh, add together. So if I press enter, as you can see, my total is out of 35, which is uh, what I planned for. So I've done all of this correctly so far. As uh, I do the next one with the electric fields, so electric fields, I'm going to highlight uh, question 10A all the way to uh, 13C. So I'm just going to do the sum formula again, uh, highlight the cells and just press enter, and that's out of 25. I'll finish the last one with motion. So my first motion question is 14, uh, 14A, and that all goes all the way to 26. I'm just going to press enter. So that's out of 40. So that's my three sections. I got 35, 20, and 40. Um, and that's how I can break down each section. So if any of the students have done poorly in one of the areas of study, we can mainly have a focus. We can break down individual questions, but overall that, that would be able to give us a good uh, score. Now what we want to do is uh, we'll do a total. Okay, so what I'm going to do is these next couple of, of cells, I'm just going to widen a little bit just so I can give myself a bit of room. So I'm going to resize that column. And I might make that maybe, uh, we'll go 60. See if that works. So in this first column, I'm just going to go total. Okay, so this is going to be our total score as we work our way through. The next one is going to be our percentage. Okay, I'm just going to double click that so that widens it automatically to fit the text in. And then, so I actually we will do the total first. So the total, I'm just going to do the sum formula again, except I'm going to highlight all of the questions. So it's just going to equal sum, open bracket, and I'm just going to highlight all the ones at the start of the field all the way to question 26 in the motion. I hit enter, and that's uh, I've done that correctly. So that's a 35, 25, and 40 all added together, and I get 100. Uh, the next column is percentage. So what we want with the percentage is we just want to uh, work out, obviously, what the percentage is. So... Uh, how we do that is we click the cell that where the total mark is, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide it by uh, how many marks the question's out of. So I'm going to, we actually divide it by the exact same cell. The only difference is is this second cell we're going to lock lock that cell, and how we lock that second cell is by pressing F4, 
on your uh, keypad. So if you press F4, what you'll notice is you get the little dollar signs within those cells, and that just tells us that locks that cell. So that second cell won't change, the first one will, which is what we want. Okay, as I press Enter, I'm going to get the uh, value of 1. To convert it to a percentage, we've got our uh, little percentage uh, to format it as a percentage. So I click that, and if we want it to two, 2, 1, or more decimal places, we can just adjust it like that. I like just going to whole number. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, so with these formulas so far, what we're going to do is I'm going to keep them. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down. So if I uh, scroll all the way to the left, I've got my students. Okay, so my Year 12 office students. Uh, with um, Excel, you can do this as well. With Google Docs, it's really easy. You see those little two thickened lines. What I can do is I can grip that where that little hand comes up, and I can bring it across. And what that what that does is no matter where I scroll, how far horizontally I scroll, that uh, cell is locked. Okay, so that whole column, column A is locked. So when I go left and right, that uh, column is locked. So what I need to do now is with my fields, um, if we go to the bottom right-hand corner of that cell, we get like a, um, a little plus sign, like a little target uh, on the bottom right. So what we do is we click that and scroll down. And I'm going to scroll down to where Sourcing is. And that's going to generate the cell. So what happens is, is automatically, if we click on that cell uh, for me at the top, um, if I click on the actual formula, it tells me what cells it's going to add up. And it's going to add me up, add up all the scores that uh, I've got when I've sat the um, physics exam for questions 1A all the way, all, the, uh, all through to 9. So if I can continue that, that will let me generate all the scores for each of those sections. I've gone one too many, so I'll delete that. Um, I'm also going to do the same for percentage, uh, the total and percentage. So that's all there. That's all set up. So if you look at uh, Jonathan, if Jonathan gets uh, 13A correctly, as you can see in that column, it's worth out of three marks. If he gets three marks, I press Enter. What's going to happen is under the topic of electric fields, he's going to receive three marks. And obviously to the total, he's going to get three marks. And we've got a percentage. So so far, he's on 3%. Okay, so all those formulas are sort of working out. If I added a, uh, if I gave Jonathan a mark, for in fields, the first topic. So as you can see, I'm going to press enter. That column adds up to the field, so it doesn't go into any other column. That's under the field section, but the total is six. So we've got the total, and then again, just to make sure this works. So for 17C on Jonathan, we'll go two, and there we go. So each of the sections got three for fields, three for electric fields, two for motion, but on total, he's on eight. So it makes it nice and easy. Uh, the next next part is uh, how to rank the students. I like to rank the students uh, from, obviously, uh, highest to lowest. So what I do is, just in the marks column, I'm just going to type in rank. Okay, I'll put that in bold. I'm not actually going to do anything with that first row. The very important one is the uh, one underneath, the very first student. Okay, in, in this case, this is me. So to do a rank formula, what we do is we just press equals again. So just it lets us know that we're going to do a formula. I type in rank open bracket i click the total so the total that i want to rank uh justin on and then i press comma and then i want to compare them to a particular uh, field of students so what i do once i press a comma i click on all the student cells okay so every student that we particularly have for that column so that uh total score that we're ranking the students on and it goes to a different color of purple uh what i want to do though which is very important is i want the first cell to be able to change but the ones in purple i want to lock so to lock that all i'm going to do is press the f4 and what you'll notice where my cursor is we've got those dollar signs there and that's what, exactly what we're looking for so if i press enter uh, i get a rank number one and i'm just going to scroll that down so what happens is uh, that first cell is changing so as you notice for sean uh, the first cell in the yellow uh, little box is focused on his total score However, the range of students that we're ranking him against uh, hasn't changed. And that's ideally what we have planned for. So this is going to be the end of my part one video. I'll make another one. I'm just limited to a 15-minute time frame. So, yeah, I'll be two seconds.